Welcome to the UChem tutorial on drawing Lewis dot structures. In this video, what we're going to focus on are the rules and some examples to help us apply those rules in learning how to draw Lewis dot structures. So let's begin by example, and let's start with CO2. With carbon dioxide, I need to find out how many total valence electrons there are in that entire molecule. Because when I draw a Lewis dot structure, what I do is I draw a sort of a skeleton and then I fill in all these valence electrons until I've used them up. So what I have is four for carbon and two times six, so six valence electrons for one oxygen times two for the two I find there. And so I get a total of 16 valence electrons for the molecule. Now, let me draw in all of the atoms in the molecule, connecting them with double dots or with two shared all right, electrons, a pair, all right, a single bond between all the atoms first. I put the most electronegative atoms on the outside. So I'm going to put those oxygens on the outside, and then I'm going to distribute all the rest of the electrons till I get 16. When I do that, I'm going to look now for octets. And I find octets around both oxygens, including those shared pairs with the carbon. But I only find four total electrons around carbon. So I have to do some more searching in terms of how to alter my structure to make it have octets for everyone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start sharing by sharing a pair with the oxygen moving a pair over. So I'm sharing that with carbon. So that gives carbon six, but that's still not enough. So I do that again on the other side, and that gives me eight total electrons around the carbon. It has all shared pairs. And then for each oxygen, it has two sets of lone pairs and two sets of shared pairs, giving it also each one eight. So now let's take a look at all those uh, electrons. If I counted all of those that are in blue, so I just wanted to highlight all the atoms there and all the electrons that they hold and share, what I find are 16 total electrons. So if I look at this in a different way, most chemists don't like to keep drawing all these dots. What we do is we diagram them by determining how many shared pairs there are, how many bonds there are. And for each shared pair, I draw a single line. So we have two lines, so that's double bond between a carbon and an oxygen here. And there's two of those double bonds for the carbon, one to each oxygen there. Now let me draw a Lewis dot structure for a compound that has the formula C2H6O. So I'm going to count my valence electrons, and this time I have 20 valence electrons total. And then what I'm going to do is find an arrangement where I can put all the hydrogens on the outside, all the electronegative atoms towards the outside, and I'm going to be left with the carbons in the center. When I do that, I have two electrons between each atom and its neighbor, and that'll give me all these single bonds in the molecule. When I do that, I end up with some electrons left over. So I'm going to use those and put them around the oxygen because it's the most electronegative element. Now what I can do is I can go ahead and count all these electrons and see whether I've used them all up. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Oh, I've got them all. So that shows me the structure of that molecule that has the formula shown above. Now, if you're clever, you can figure out that there's another way that you could have drawn this. And that actually put the oxygen on the inside. And sometimes you can do that. Um, so this is an alternate structure down here on the bottom. And if you count all the electrons, you end up with a structure that has 20 electrons around it as well. And so this is also a valid structure given the formula above. There are more specific ways of writing chemical formulas for these types of covalent compounds. Those specify the order of the atoms in the structure a little bit more clearly. This time, what I'm going to do is show you the rules and then do some more practice. First, you need to count the valence electrons for all atoms. All right, we're going to add electrons for negative charges, subtract electrons for positive charges. I'll get to that in a little bit. And we'll also connect all the atoms with single bonds first, and then place more electronegative atoms on the outside. And the fourth thing is to place hydrogens on the outside. And the fifth thing is to distribute electrons so there are lone pairs on the terminal or the outside atoms, if possible. And then we're going to put four multiple bonds, if necessary, to make octets, like I did with carbon dioxide. Now, these 
charges that I have alluded to in rule number one, um, not all elements um, are going to be charged when we look at a compound and not all of the compounds we looked at will be charged. In this video we'll focus on mostly uncharged compounds and there's a future video on resonance that has a lot to do with charged compounds. So remember atoms should have octets or duets. The exception to that are those in periods below period two and those uh, elements can have expanded octets but they have to have a minimum of an eight um, set. Let's take a look at another example. Here we have ammonia and ammonia has eight valence electrons. So if I look at that I can put single bonds between everything and then look at the extras as lone pairs and if I look at that nitrogen has an octet, hydrogen has duets, looks good to me. If I count them I have eight total electrons and so that is the structure for ammonia. If I look at another example C6H12, now I can look at this by looking at the total number of valence electrons, that's 36, and now I'm going to draw all six of those carbons in a row and then put all those hydrogens there and then I'm going to go ahead and count my electrons and when I do that I'm looking for 36 so I'm going to go ahead and put those all in and the blue is going to highlight 36 electrons and when I do that I see that I have two left over. So this is kind of peculiar. There's really no way for me to arrange these at least in a line like this where I'm going to have a total of 36 electrons around there and still have all my um, carbons hooked together. So what we'll find is that in situations like these we can actually loop the carbons around and make a ring and when I do that I need to erase those last ones because those aren't allowed and I have only the blue electrons that I'm using. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the ring. And it's easier to draw the ring with bonds than it is to draw those little dots. So what I've done is I've drawn a pair of electrons between each of the carbons and that represents those pairs you see shared between each carbon above and then that little extra pair on the right side to close up the ring. And then after that all I need to do is put in all those hydrogens around two for each of the carbons and I have now used all 36 of my um, electrons total. How do I know that? Well you just have to count the number of bonds. So if I look at that I'll look at the fact that I have 18 total bonds. If I were to count the number of electrons in there it's 18 times 2. Alright so with these Lewis dot structure examples what I've been able to show you is how to draw some simple structures as well as some little bit more complex structures always remembering those rules that I showed you. The rules that give you the order in which to D distribute those electrons so that you can get all of them used up, octets for most, duets for some, and expanded octets for some of those larger atoms.